From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India's a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. Easter is a Christian holiday that celebrates the belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The festival is celebrated with great religious fervor all around the world. People go to churches for lighting candles and attending the midnight mass. Let's have a look at how Easter was celebrated around India this year. Take a look. Christians across India flock churches to attend the midnight mass and celebrate the occasion of Easter the day when Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead three days after his crucifixion. Men, women and children lit candles and offered prayers in churches to mark the festival. Christ's resurrection is seen as a sign of new beginnings and hope and it is thought that people who believe in him will be resurrected as well. <laughs> நண்பர்களுக்கும் தொலைக்காட்சி நேயர்களுக்கும் முதன் முதலிலே கிறிஸ்து பிறப்பின் கிறிஸ்து உயிர்ப்பின் பெருவிழாவின் வாழ்த்துக்களை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்வதில் நான் பெரும் மகிழ்ச்சி அடைகின்றேன் உலகத்தில் இருக்கின்ற கிறிஸ்தவர்கள் ஏறக்குடைய இருநூற்றி எண்பது கோடி மக்கள் இன்று கிறிஸ்துவின் உயிர்ப்பின் விழாவை கொண்டாடுகிறார்கள் இந்த விழா வந்து கிறிஸ்தவங்களுக்கு மட்டும் கிடையாது மனித குலத்திற்கு மானிடத்திற்கு கொடுக்கப்படுகின்ற விழா கிறிஸ்து வந்துடைய இறப்பு டெவடீஸ் இன் நியூ டெல்லி கோவா அண்ட் திருவனந்தபுரம் சிட்டிஸ் வர் சீன் செலிப்ரேட்டிங் தி ஃபெஸ்டிவல் வித் கிரேட் ரிலீஜியஸ் பவர் லைட்ஸ் வர் டர்ன்ட் ஆஃப் டு சிம்பலைஸ் தி டார்க்னஸ் ஆஃப் ஜீசஸ் குசிஃபிக்ஷன் அண்ட் த நைட் ஸ்காய் வாஸ் ஃபில்ட் வித் கலர்ஃபுல் ஃபயர் ஒர்க்ஸ் அகார்டிங் டு கிறிஸ்டின் பிலீவ்ஸ் Easter is a celebration of triumph of life over death. Easter is uh, the most important day uh, or solemnity in the calendar of the Christian uh, uh, church and faith because on this day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord from death. We know that he was uh, crucified on the cross and that was remembered on good friday the celebration of the easter festival begins on palm sunday a day which marks the entrance of jesus in jerusalem the next important day is that of good friday which commemorates the crucifixion and the death of jesus christ in western christianity Easter begins on Easter Sunday and ends on 50th day. During the Holy Week, devotees observe a 40-day fasting ritual where they abstain from meat and alcohol. I am standing in front of uh, St. Joseph's Cathedral in Palayam, Trivandrum. So tonight we are celebrating uh, Easter season and uh, our church has conducted a major celebration over here, uh, led by uh, the famous priest and bishop. and tonight families and friends have gathered here to celebrate the resurrection of our lord jesus christ this marks as the end of season of lent and uh, families and uh, friends gather together to celebrate the season of lent and this marks the uh, end of season easter is a popular day for the process of baptism and welcoming new members into the christian faith this day also marks the end of the lent period Education is the movement from darkness to light. The famous quote signifies that proper education can shape the future of a nation. Taking education to all the seekers, a Muslim woman in a small village of Madurai is not only teaching students but also instilling in them a secularism using language as a tool. Regardless of the religion and caste, students here are provided with free classes. Willere Patti is a small village located on the Madurai Melur highway although small it serves as a token of communal harmony that people of the indian subcontinent have been harboring in their hearts for ages 
In a display of the indomitable spirit of humanity, Taslima Nasreen, a Muslim woman, has taken it upon herself to give classes to children from surrounding villages and help them in their studies. Her classes usually take place during evening prayers at the Murugan Temple in Vilaripatti village. Children from surrounding villages take lessons from their beloved teacher after offering their prayers at the temple. I am going to go to the center of the center. I am going to play in the path of 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 the path அதுகளுக்கு <laughs> Taslima is not only a philanthropist, but a role model for specially abled persons as well. Being physically challenged and having health problems like shortness of breath does not stop her from serving the community. She is teaching the children under the Illam Tedi Kalvi scheme which translates to education at the doorstep. It is an initiative taken by the Tamil Nadu government to encourage the admission of over 1 lakh girl students in schools for empowering women in the state. படிக்கிறதுக்கு ரொம்ப ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கு நான் ஞாயிற்றுக்கிழமை ஒரு நாள் லீவ் விடுறதே ஏன்டா லீவ் விட்டுருக்காங்க அப்படின்ற மாதிரி இருக்கு தஸ்லீமாக்கா ரொம்ப நல்லா சொல்லி தராங்க ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கு நல்லா ஏதாவது டவுட்னாலும் அந்த அக்காட்ட கேட்டாலும் நல்லா சொல்லி தராங்க ஸ்டோரி கேம்ஸ் இந்த மாதிரி நிறைய அது சொல்லி தராங்க இங்க தஸ்லீமாக்கா வந்து முருகன் கோவிலில் வந்து நாங்க தினமும் ஸ்கூல் விட்டு வந்தோடனே இங்க வந்துருவோம் தினமும் ஸ்கூல்ல இங்க வந்து டியூஷன்ல வந்து நல்லா பாட்டு சொல்லி கொடுப்பாங்க கேம்ஸ் எல்லாம் நல்லா விளையாட விடுவாங்க கேம்ஸ் அந்த இது அந்த பாட்டு கேம்ஸ் அந்த அது மூலியமாவே வந்து படிப்பும் சொல்லி கொடுப்பாங்க நாங்க வந்து இப்ப இந்த பாட்டு இதெல்லாம் சொல்லி கொடுக்கலையே வந்து இந்த பசங்க எல்லாம் சேட்டை பண்ணுவாங்க அதெல்லாம் அந்த அக்கா எப்படியாவது இது பண்ணி வச்சு உட்கார வச்சிருவாங்க in order to help the underprivileged and to promote communal harmony among her students, Taslima Nasreen teaches students in the Murugan Temple and is appreciated by their parents for the same. India has always upheld the famous saying, Unity in diversity, and people like Taslima have played a major role in strengthening the bond of secularism for ages in the country. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Devotees in India's southern Madurai district celebrated the annual Panguni festival to show their devotion to Lord Murugan, the Hindu god of war, as they pulled a massive chariot. The festival is celebrated every year with great fervor to mark the wedding of the Lord Murugan with Goddess Daivanai and it starts on the full moon day of the month Falgun or Chaitra as per the Hindu calendar. <laughs> The procession of pulling the chariot, which included an elephant and a crowd of devotees, began from the Subramanyam Swami temple. The festival has six major events that take place over 15 days. The most popular is the symbolic wedding of the gods, followed by a chariot festival in which Sundareshwaram and Meenakshi, the king and queen of Pandya kingdom, come to see their subjects on decorated chariots. <music> Members of the transgender community participated in a beauty pageant in New Delhi, which was organized to promote inclusivity and to give them a platform to showcase their talent to the world. 
11 contestants from all around the country were selected to represent themselves in the Miss Trans Queen India, during which they performed in swimwear, traditional attires and interacted with the judges. My aim was to uh, start inclusion and empowerment of a trans community in this uh, uh, you know social society because uh, most of the time uh, uh, trans community is misjudged by the people that they can only do a sex work or a bag you know i wanted to tell the whole society that if you give them a platform be it of any platform i have given this platform of beauty and talent but if you give them any platform they will you know show their capabilities and come out with the flying colors Arshi Ghosh was crowned the winner along with Ella Dev Verma and Victoria Taying who were declared the first and the second runner ups respectively Ghosh who will represent India on international platforms was awarded 50% discount on gender reassignment surgery after winning the pageant transgender community members are frowned upon in India and struggle to get decent education opportunities facing sniggers abuses and bullying they are often forced to drop out of educational institutions adult transgenders are left with limited choices of occupation like begging or prostitution Vintage car owners gathered in India's western Pune city to take part in a rally and showcase their classic beauties. I am here for the Pune Vintage and Classic Car Club Rally. I have about six cars in the event. This very special Maharaja of Mysore car which I will come back to. <clears throat> I also have a SL, 190 SL which belonged to the Maharani Gayatri Devi uh, of Jaipur. There is a Silver Cloud 2. There is a Chevy truck which is very special. Around 125 vintage vehicles including cars used by Bollywood, Hollywood celebrities, India's former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and former royals were driven in a 15km rally organised by the Vintage and Classic Car Club of India. Vintage models of Rolls Royce, Chevrolet, Mercedes-Benz, MG1939 and Bentley Mark VI were some of the cars that participated in the event. Ingrained with rich values and various beliefs, India is known for its diverse culture and unique traditions in the whole world. It has always been the land of Sufi saints who have not only played a key role in combining various religions, but have also emphasized the inward search for God and inherent generosity in humans. So today we take you to the shrine of Sufi saint Abdul Aziz in Kashmir, which has served as a pilgrimage site for people coming from different religious and ethnic backgrounds. Take a look. Situated in the Nagrota village in the far-flung area of Rajori, the shrine of Sufi Saint Abdul Aziz has been serving as a sinecure of religious harmony for generations. People from far and wide visit the shrine to offer prayers to the Sufi Saint. The shrine is a common place of worship for people coming from different religious backgrounds. छह उसादा साईबान हमारे साथ हैं हमारे साथ लंगरी है यहाँ एक और दूर दूर से जाइए जहाँ आते हैं वो माशाल्लाह सब खासियाब हो कर जाते हैं यहाँ खासकर साईं अब्दुलजीत बादशाह के दरबार में काफी अकेदत वाले लोग आते हैं जिससे उनको लोगों को फायदा भी है और यहाँ अपनी मन्नत मानते हैं सलावत देते हैं सलाते हैं जिससे हमारा मंदरसा चलता है हमारे उसादों की तरफ़ वहाँ से निकलते हैं हमारे ये मस्जिद का काम चल रहा है हम काम करते हैं मेनी बिलीव दैट द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ दी सूफी सेंट्स हैव केप्ट पीस एंड यूनिटी इन द पीपल ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर अलाइव फॉर जनरेशंस फॉर डेविडीज इट इज द साइट वेयर दे बिलीव दैट ऑल देयर हेल्थ इश्यूज एंड सफरिंग्स कम टू एन एंड बहुत सारे ईसाई हो सिख हो हिंदू हो मुसलमान हो इस ज्यारत में कसीर तादाद में आते हैं और इनसे फैज लेकर जाते हैं जैसे जैसे लोग मिन्नत मानते हैं अगर जायज़ हो तो पूरा भी हो जाते हैं 
टाइम ही नहीं लगता मैं यहाँ ज्यारत में रहता हूँ और बहुत सारी चीज़ें मैंने देखा है कि किसी को हफ्ता में किसी को दो दिन में किसी को एक दिन में किसी को महीना में जैसे जैसे उनकी सुखन होती है वैसा पूरी हो जाती है For centuries, the holy sites like the Darga of Saint Abdul Aziz have served as the symbol of peaceful coexistence between the people who belong to different religions, castes, or diversifications. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Italian land artist. Dario Gambarin paid tribute to Pablo Picasso by carving out a giant portrait to mark the 50th anniversary of the death of the Spanish painter. Gambarin painted the portrait on a 25,000 square meter wasteland in Castenaro with a tractor. The artist said he was inspired by the self-portrait of Picasso made in 1907. Mexican archaeologists found a circular shaped Mayan scoreboard used for the ball game at Chichen Itza's archaeological site, Mexican Anthropology and History Institute. The disc features the carving of two ball game players and was found in the Chinchan Hope architectural complex. Experts say the scoreboard dates back to the early post-classic period between the years 800 AD and early 900 AD this is the first discovery in over 11 years of an object with hieroglyphic writing in this case a complete text a chichen itza according to inah chinese artist and activist IVV unveiled his latest large scale project in London a 15 meter long recreation of cloud monets water lilies made with nearly 650000 studs of lego bricks in 22 colors the artwork titled water lilies #1 is one of the centerpieces of I's new exhibition at London's Design Museum Running under the header IVV Making Sense the design and architecture focus exhibition is I's biggest UK show in 8 years Personalizing the piece I added a dark spot on the right hand side of the artwork to depict the door to the underground dwelling in China Xinjiang province where he and his family lived in forced exile from the early 1960s until the end of the cultural revolution in 1976 after his father was labeled an enemy of the state water lilies hashtag #1 is ai's largest lego creation but the artist is no stranger to the medium his 2014 installation trays comprised of 176 lego portraits of political prisoners from around the world making sense also features another new lego artwork by i untitled lego incident one of five expansive fields featuring hundreds of thousands of objects laid out on the gallery floor The plastic toy bricks in the piece were donated by members of the public from around the world in response to Lego briefly refusing to sell their products to I in 2014 the design museum said I said he embraced the opportunity to exhibit the large scale items IVV making sense runs at the design museum until July 30 India never backs down when it comes to her endeavors towards shaping a future based on sustainable development. India's remarkable achievements in the field of science, technology, space and agriculture have proved India's capability and commitment to innovation. To address global health concerns, the country is now advocating for the consumption of millet, the forgotten grain. Join us as we discuss India's efforts for bringing millet back to the common man's plate and its role in the food security. 
India has done remarkably well when it has come to meeting the caloric needs and demands of her people. Unlike a large part of the rest of the world, almost every Indian household is acquainted with the taste and the benefits of millets. Millets have been a staple of the Indian diet, especially in rural India, for years and remain prevalent even today. They have been a large contributor to Indians' balanced diets. The Government of India has identified millets as a safe bet to enhance farmers' income and as a reliable grain to ensure India's nutritional and food security. We are the largest producer and second largest exporter of Sri Anna in the world. We grow several types of Sri Anna, <laughs> such as Sri Anna Jowar, Sri Anna Ragi, Sri Anna Bajra, Sri Anna Kutu, Ramdana, Kangani, Kutni, Kutki, Kodo, China, and Sama. Millets went out of favor and down the order in the common man's kitchen when many food conglomerates, driven by profits and not by the desire to help improve health standards of people, prioritized other grains over millets. India, like many other countries, witnessed a major decline in both production and consumption of millets. Public perception of millets also changed due to the market being increasingly dominated by wheat. Pearl millet is a crop which have uh, which are good in fruit. It has high content of protein. It is good in fat content. It has good fiber content and then protein, uh, this uh, carbohydrate content. Beside this, there is lot of uh, uh, micronutrient, especially iron and zinc. However, now realizing the nutritious value and climatic reliance of millet production. The Indian government took it upon itself to revive the practice of adding millets to the country's food basket once again. The government of India, to encourage millets cultivation and consumption, declared 2018 as the National Year of Millets. The government also began referring to millets as nutri-cereals, giving them an image makeover. It is because of such efforts that India exported 64 million USD of millets in 2021. It was a remarkable achievement considering India had not even touched the export mark of 30 million USD worth of millets in 2019 and 2020. India, which is home to 20% of the global millet production, with a staggering 80% contribution in Asia's millets production, also proposed that the United Nations declare an International Year of Millets. Cognizant of India's success in feeding her vast population, an MO of Working for Global Welfare, the global body declared 2023 as the International Year of Millets. Recently, New Delhi hosted the Global Millets Conference, wherein as many as 100 Indian millet exhibitors and around 100 international buyers from countries around the world participated. The event was aimed at further promoting and developing the global millet market. According to the International Crop Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, more than 90 million people depend on millets in their diet. Millets are versatile grains that grow in half the time as wheat and use 70% less water than rice, providing a multifold benefit. A concentrated campaign to enhance the production and consumption of millets, which are rich in carbs, proteins and vitamins, can change the entire paradigm of the food and health industry globally. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team.